so in one of my previous videos we went ahead and tried visual scripting for the first time in Godot 3 but as you may already know Godot Visual Script was discontinued in Godot version 4, but I was able to find an add-on that would bring Visual Scripting back to Godot 4. The add-on being Godot Orchestrator, which was kind of similar to Visual Script in Godot 3, but that video was more of an overview on what Visual Scripting looks like in Godot. And so as a result, the finished product didn't really look like a game. At least not a fully finished game. And so that's why in this video I'm gonna try to make a full game using only visual scripting. So first things first, you need to have a Godot version that still supports visual scripting or you can use the orchestrator add-on on the latest version which is what I'm gonna use for this game. And so with that out of the way, I wanted to make a game that wasn't really complicated to make and also not super simple. And I had this idea of a top-down shooter with a tank but I was like let's make it 3D because who doesn't like 3D? So I started making the 3D models first and I know the models aren't great but this is not a 3D modeling tutorial and also I wanted to spend most of my time with the logic of the game. So I imported models in Godot and the first thing I did was to experiment with the game a little by first making some of the game in GDScript since that's what I know better and then I can see the difference better between GDScript and visual scripting. So in the tank controller script we're getting the input of the player in this part and then rotate the entire body accordingly. We also rotate the head with two different keys so they can rotate separately. And as you can see, it's working fine. So let's see the same logic in Orchestrator. Now you can use the Orchestrator with GDScript in the same project, but here I made a separate project just so we're a bit more organized and don't have to switch between scripts. Now to make a new script with visual scripting, which they call orchestration, you'll do the same thing that you would do when you want to create a GD script. You click the attach script icon on the scene tab and choose orchestrator as a language. So this empty space here is where you do your visual scripting. To start off, let's go ahead and create the variables that we'll need for our tank. And I find it kind of cool that you can see all of your variables on the right and if you ever need them you can just drag and drop them. Now to give you a simple example on visual scripting, let's go back to GDScript for a moment. So here we are printing a text on the ready method. To do the same in visual scripting, first we need the ready event which we can get from the function tab using the override button. Then we can add a node called print. I'll add another node for string and by connecting the corresponding pins, if we run this we can see that we have the same result as we did with GDScript. So now that we have some ideas about how visual programming works, let's attach our variables to the corresponding nodes which is done in the ready event. For the children nodes, you should be able to just drag and drop the node in the graph and then to check for the input of the player we'll use an action node with a branch to check if we are actually pressing a button and then we should just be able to use the rotate y function to rotate the tank. If you think about it this is kind of similar to GDScript in some ways. Now I'll duplicate this for the other direction as well and now we have the rotation parts figured out. Now to make this whole thing more organized I turn each part into its own function. You don't have to do this but yeah. Now rotating the head and movement was also quite simple to achieve. I'm just using the basis to move forward which is achieved by setting the linear velocity on the rigid body and yeah I'm using rigid bodies instead of character controllers because I think they work better here. Here you can see the same logic but in GDScript. Keep in mind I'm getting the input a little bit differently in the GDScript version. And you can see by setting the linear velocity on the rigid body, we're applying a force on the tank to move towards the direction it's looking. But if you remember from the GDScript part, we were also able to move the tank head separately as well. So let's do that. And that should be pretty much the same as rotating the body, but this time we're doing the rotation on the head. Also, another cool thing I found is that you can click the validate button to check for any errors in your graph, which I kind of find interesting. Anyways, the next step was to implement the shooting, which if you look at the GDScript code, you can see that we're controlling the barrel animation part with a tween, and instantiate the ball from a packed scene, then add it as a child of the current scene, position it, and then shoot it. In the visual scripting part, we're doing the exact same thing, instantiate the scene, add child, set position, and set linear velocity. But for some reason I couldn't use tween here. For some reason it would crash if I used the tween property function. So I ended up using the animation player instead. Let me know what I'm doing wrong if you have any ideas. 
Anyways, I added the fire rate logic, which we did not have in GD script for some reason. So now that we can shoot, we can actually call this a tank. Also, this is the same fire rate control logic in GD script. Now, obviously, shooting balls at the void is not so much fun. So let's go ahead and add the 3D model for the enemy and make some simple logic to follow the player. Now, like the main tank, let's make the logic in GD script first. To not make this video long, also beginner friendly, I'm gonna use the look at function which makes the model face the player at all times also that means we're not gonna have the enemy head rotate and just rely on the whole body rotation we'll also check if the distance between the player and the enemy tank is bigger than a certain value in which case we'll move towards the player until we reach the limit and you can see this approach kind of works as long as there's nothing that's gonna block the enemy tank now back in orchestrator you can see that it's not really any different but the part that was kind of annoying is getting the player node which you'd think you just call the get node function and you'd be right but for some reason you can't directly connect it to the node 3d I had to use a type conversion and drag and dropping didn't work because it only seemed to work for the children node so with that out of the way I copy and pasted the shooting logic from the main tank script to the enemy script one thing you need to keep in mind is that make sure not to copy and paste variable nodes across different scripts or it may crash now we basically have the shooting set up for the enemy tank. I made a different 3D model for the enemy's bullets just to make the game a bit more exciting and after assigning it we can see things are looking good. But you see now the game looks kind of boring so I wanted to add some animations on the enemy tank for when it got hit just so we get some feedback when the ball reaches the target. Now to trigger that animation we'll use the on body entered signal on the enemy's rigid body but first we'll make sure that the object that's touching the ball is the bullet and then we want to make sure that it's not grounded this is a variable i made myself on the ball's orchestration it basically checks if it has already been used to deal damage to a tank so now if we played this we can see that the enemy's tank is reacting to our projectiles with an animation so by now you'd think that our game should almost be finished and you'd be right all that's left to do is to add some crucial stuff like health system and score so first i made a health variable for the main tank and the enemy tank and also a destroy animation for the enemy tank so now if the enemy tank gets hit enough it will play that animation and after a few seconds it's going to free itself here you can see that logic we first play the destroy animation and then wait for two seconds and then call the queue free function and for the main tank we take care of the health system in another script now with that out of the way i made a ui system basically a score counter so we know how many tanks we've destroyed a health counter which you could also use a progress bar for. Speaking of progress bars, I'm using this add-on for the 3D progress bar to show the enemy's tank's HP, which you can see it actually adds a lot to the game. Back in the UI part, we also have a win screen for when you've taken care of all of the tanks and a fail screen. Now this game has a lot of work to be done before it can be called complete, but I think I'll leave it here. So like I said before in my previous video, this add-on is a good way to bring back visual scripting in Godot, but it does have some some small issues that hopefully get solved in the future. Like for example, you can't really undo anything in the graph, which is sometimes annoying, but these are small things. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon.